welcome students today we will going to read a famous poem the road not taken and the poet is robert frost in this video i will teach you the whole poem word by word the thematic part and also the structural part of the poem the rhyme scheme the tone mood and all the aspects so very carefully watch the video till the end before uh, reading any poetry we should know what is poetry you all know that uh, but here look at two definitions of poetry <coughs> it is a very popular debate and popular discussion for many critics about the definition and about the ranges of poetry what poetry is the first quotation is by famous romantic poet william wordsworth so what william wordsworth tells us about poetry it is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings look at the word spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings means spontaneous means in bengali satoshpurto so you should have a feeling after experiencing something after watching something and this feeling should be active enough to write poems is this feelings should be powerful but look at the latter part of the sentence recollected in tranquility after watching something you shouldn't write poetry immediately you should take rest you should indulge yourself in thought deep thinking about the incident and then you can write poetry in tranquil manner means in quiet manner and you should recollect it remember those past events or past happenings or your past feelings so this is william wordsworth's quotation and now look the second one this is your poet this poem written by robert frost and robert frost's beautiful quotation is there so poetry is when an emotion has found its thought and the thought has found words so there are three important things are there one is emotion one is thought and another one is words so you all know that the two main feelings are there uh before writing any kind of literature whether it is poetry novel drama etc imagination should be there and emotion should be there so when an emotion the poet finds an emotion in his mind in his heart he becomes thoughtful and when thoughtful he doesn't keep the thought stuck in his mind alone it is expressed through beautiful words so it is the definition of poetry according to robert frost and the third important point is more often than not poetry gives a message ekta bartta dai it can be personal message or it can be otherwise that is uh, social message or something else so this is poetry in a nutshell uh, another important very important factor is frost's own view about not only poetry but about teaching poetry more specifically teaching poetry in classroom frost was against let me tell let me tell you in the very beginning that frost was against teaching poetry in classroom what was his opinion about this it the poetry in his opinion was a private matter it is a very private thing reading poetry and reading poems but in his opinion if poems are taught in classroom it reduces them to the rank of mere information shudhumatro kichu totthyo bhandar toiri hoy kichu totthyo kichu information amader kichu data amader moddhe jama hoy echhara poetry er je ashol charm ashol je splendor seta kintu hariye jay if poetry is taught and poetry is given space in classroom curriculum 
he also uh, you know equates this teaching poetry in classroom with love degenerating into public philanthropy. Love is a different matter, love is more higher than public philanthropy, love is a private matter and religion is also a private matter, it is personal opinion what religion is to me can't be religion to some other persons and religion is degraded to church doctrine. So, similarly, if poetry is taught in classroom, it is a degeneration, it is not you know up to the mark. So, he was against teaching poetry in classroom. So, it is a very ironical on our part that we are discussing, we are going to you know read <coughs> Frost's own poem uh, in e classroom method in this video, though he was deadly against this method. Okay. Now, come to the text, you are just looking at the picture and looking at the picture you are very sure that it is going to be a nat natural poem and look at the surroundings at a beautiful wood, beautiful woods are the woods is there and in this scenario, in this backdrop the poem is written. So, uh, we should know a bit about the author, the poet look at the picture, he is a, our aged poet and Robert Frost, the autograph is also there. So, it is a younger, much younger picture of Robert Frost. Robert Lee Frost, March 26, 1874, his date of birth and January 29, 1963, he died. Was an American poet, look at this. This is uh, remember this, he is an American poet, not British or Irish. His work was initially published in England before it was published in America. He is highly regarded for his realistic description of rural life and his comment of American colloquial speech. So, he mostly dealt with rustic pastoral lifestyles in and natural backgrounds in his poems. Frost was honored frequently during his lifetime. He received four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry, char bar kinto tini Pulitzer Prize jeta kovitar jonno tini peyechilen. He became one of the America's rare publicity literary figures, almost an artistic institution. Pray tini nijer jaygay America te tini kinto ekta protishthaner moto hoye uthechilen, artistic protishthan, shilpo protishthan te nijei jeno ekti hoyechilen. He was so famous. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1960 for his poetical works. So, now come to the poem and before uh, going to the text directly, we should know uh, little more you know bits and introductions and background about this poem. So, uh, the poem was first published in 1916, remember this and wh what was the name of the anthology, what was the name of the collection, Mountain Interval and in that in, in that anthology the our our poem the road not taken came as the first poem in this collection background what was the background of this poem particular poem frost spent years 1912 to 1915 in england where he met the writer edward thomas remember the name and became close friends and took many walks together after frost returned to new hampshire in 1915 he sent Thomas an advanced copy of the road not taken. So, he uh, wrote the poem the road not taken and he sent to his uh, one of the close friends Edward Thomas for his reaction. Thomas took the poem seriously and personally. Thomas was so much impressed about this poem that he took it very much personally and he was very much overwhelmed writing uh, you know reading this friend's poem. It may have been significant Thomas decision to enlist in World War 1 and Thomas was killed 2 years later in the battle of Arras. So, Tom, uh, he, he was so much impressed, so much moved after reading the poem that he uh, thought that uh, a different route, a different path should be taken by me also and he enlisted himself in the World War and later he was murdered. Before uh, going to the text, uh, let us be very careful because Frost uh, 
uh, himself according to his biographer who wrote Frost's biography Lawrence Thompson he said that Frost once said about this poem that it is a very tricky poem. So, you should be very careful enough very careful while reading this poem and it has many ironical possibilities. So, you can read the poem, but very careful. So, now look at the title of the poem. The title is The Road Not Taken. Uh, it is a very simple English. The road means paths, but, but here the road is not, you know, uh, lit, uh, lot, not uh, here literally speaking spoken. The road we all know the road means pathways, but here the road is a symbol. What is symbol? Symbol means pratik, sign. Here road means journey, choices in life, choices made in life. And many times the choice we make we regret later and we it cannot be undone by us whatever we do and not taken the look at the word not we will discuss you know this word uh, elaborately later uh, while going through the poem but not is very important because not taken look at the word not taken so the poet was very much confused and very much regretful about the right choice about the right decision he made or not now come to the poem. Look at the first stanza. What does the first stanza say? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveller, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So now come to the detailed analysis word by word of this stanza. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. There are two roads. Diverged means separated. Where? In yellow wood. So, the poet was traveling in a wood. And what was the wood's color, color of that jungle, yellow. Yellow means forest full of yellow leaves in autumn. So, the season the poet is going in the forest is autumn, remember this. And he uh, suddenly comes to a junction where two roads become separated. And sorry, I could not travel both. So, the poet the poet wanted to travel both the paths, both the roads. He was very keen to go to the both roads. But as he was the one traveller, as he was just a lonely traveller there, he could not travel both ways. Long I stood. So, he uh, was indecisive, he could not decide which road to take because he was a traveller then and he his destination was not fixed. He was not going to any fixed destination. He was just roaming about. So, long he stood, he took time to think over that which road he should take, which road he should go and look down one as far as I could and look down one. So, he then looked very keenly one road, one road. He looked very keenly and very observed very clearly that what is the road, what is the condition of the road, what is the nature of the path of that road as far as I could. So, he with his eyes, he watched very carefully that road to where it bent in the undergrowth. Bent here means carved or stooped. It is nuye jawa jeta kya mera bangla hai boi. It is nuye pora. Undergrowth means dense forest of trees. 
সুতরাং ওই রাস্তাটা যেটা প্রথম রাস্তাটা তিনি দেখছেন তিনি দেখতে পাচ্ছেন যে ওই রাস্তাটা একটু গিয়ে আর তিনি রাস্তাটা দেখতে পাচ্ছেন না কারণ ওখানে প্রচুর বড় বড় গাছে ঘন গাছেতে বড় গাছেতে একটা নুয়ে পড়েছে ওই রাস্তাটা আর দেখতে পাচ্ছে না সো অ্যাট সাম পয়েন্ট অফ টাইম ইউ কুডেন্ট নোটিস ক্লিয়ারলি দি রোড দি ফার্স্ট রোড হি ওয়াজ লুকিং বিকজ দেয়ার ওজ এ ডেন্স গ্রোথ অফ ট্রিজ দেয়ার অন দ্যাট রোড অ্যান্ড ইট ওয়াজ সো ডেন্স দ্যাট ইট স্টুপড অ্যাট সাম পয়েন্ট অফ টাইম সো দিস ইজ দি ফার্স্ট টেঞ্জার লেটাস নাও ওয়ান্স এগেন আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দিস টেঞ্জার থ্রু সাম পিকচার্স two roads diverged in your road this is two roads one is there one is there and the poet becomes very much confused ami kon pothe je choli so this kind of feeling was there in the poet's mind and sorry i couldn't travel both the poet wanted to travel both the ways but he feels sorry because he couldn't afford to travel the both ways and be one traveler long i stood only lonely traveler he was and look down one as far as i could joto dur du chok chai toto dur porjonto tini oi rasta theke porjobekkhon korchen oi rasta theke onubekkhon korchen je koto ta rasta ta bhalo ei rasta tai jawai ki thik rak thik kaj hobe amar to where it bent in the undergrowth je kichu thik kichu ta dekhar por tini dekhte pacchen je rasta ta jhuke poreche besh ghono জঙ্গল এবং ঘন গাছের সমারোহে সো হোয়াট ডাজ দি ফার্স্ট টেঞ্জ আই মিন দি পোয়েম দি স্পিকার ডিসক্রাইবস হিজ পজিশন হিয়ার দি পোয়েট ডিসক্রাইবস হিজ পজিশন ওয়াইল ট্রাভেলিং হি হ্যাজ বিন আউট ফর ওয়াকিং ইন দি রোডস অ্যান্ড কামস ইন বিটুইন দি ডাইভারসন অফ টু রোডস হি স্ট্যান্ডস দেয়ার লুকিং অ্যাজ ফার টাউন ইচ ওয়ান অ্যাজ হি ক্যান সি হি উড লাইক টু ট্রাই আউট বোথ বাট ডাউটস হি কুড ডু দ্যাট so therefore he continues to look down the roads for a long time trying to make his decision about which road to take so this is the first stage okay now come to the second stage then took the other just as as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted to air though as for that the passing there had owned them really about the same now let us dissect word by word then then means the poet thought deeply about the first road then something happened what happened he took the other road other road means the second road just as fair and having perhaps the better claim the second road was as good fair means good just as good as the first road and by having perhaps the better claim and even the poet thinks that this two roads were equally beautiful but he thinks that the second road was perhaps better than the first one better option it was better option uh we will discuss the liter- the figurative meaning later on because here road is not just road uh, after reading the whole poem we will come to the message and come to the central meaning of the poem then we will discuss the uh, latent ideas in this poem because it was grassy and wanted to wear look at this picture it is grassy this road is grassy means full of grass and wanted where wanted to be used the road uh, as if wants to tell the tra- trail the travelers that please come on and walk over me walk over my path so here where means had not been used so the second road was untrodden untraveled unlike the first road. though as for that the passing there had owned them really about this but the, here the poet is confused the poet changes his mind changes his opinion what does he say now in the last two lines in the last two lines the poet says that as he was walking through and through 
deep into that road, he noticed something. What does he notice? He noticed that this road was the same amount of traveling, this path uh, saw the same amount of traveling, the same amount of walking like the fast road. So, this road was also traveled by and used by the travelers. So, now let us again understand the poem through some pictures. Then took the other just as, as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted to grass. Though as for that the passing there, the traveled had owned them really about the same. Same means here, same means the previous road, like the first road. So, what does the second stanza mean? The speaker selects the road that appears at first glance, first glance, prothom no jure, eta mune hoye chilo, to be less owned, therefore less traveled. This selection suggests that he has an independent spirit and does not wish to follow the crowd. So, this sentence is important sentence. Uh, this selection, the poet does not follow the crowd blindly. He, he wanted jara hatke soch. He wanted to think differently and travel a path which was uh, which was not often and usually visited by the travelers. So, he has this source that he has an independent spirit and does not uh, wish to follow the crowd blindly. We will discuss it later on. After a moment, he concludes that both roads are about equally worn. But he then concludes that both the roads are just the same in, uh, in respect of travelling. Come to the third stanza now. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the past for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way. I doubt it if I should ever come back. Here and means a continuity of thought. The poet was thinking, the poet was traveling and we the readers are also traveling, are also walking like the poet in the wood. And both, both means here, both the roads. That morning, that particular morning, when the poet was traveling in the wood. So, look at the word morning. So, it was a description of morning of atom. We noticed in the first time the yellow woods signifying the season being atom. So, this autumnal morning equally lay in leaves. So, after uh, walking deep traveling deep in that second road through the forest, the poet noticed that both the roads were equally same to same, lay means here cover in leaves. So, the leaves covered both the roads, no step had trodden black and in this road no step, no human step. What do you, what do you um, what do you get if there are so many leaves lying on the uh, road? That means it signifies that uh, it has been less travelled. If it was travelled uh, with so much amount, it should have been black, black road. But it is, it is still in its original colour. So, it, this no step had trodden black means walked over or stamped it. Marie jaini oi rasta take. Even duto rasta ki marie jaini duto rasta ki into same to same. The poet confirms it. And now, now begins the poet's divorce, regret. 
যে কেন আমি ওই রাস্তাটাই গেলাম না প্রথম রাস্তাটা ও আই কেপড দি ফার্স্ট ফর অ্যানাদার ডে ও অ্যান্ড ইন্টারজেকশন ইন্টারজেকশন দি পোয়েট সাইজ ওভার হিস ডিসিশন ফর নট চুজিং দি রাইট দি ফার্স্ট রোড আই কেপ দি ফার্স্ট ফার্স্ট মিনস ইয়ার দি ফার্স্ট রোড ফর অ্যানাদার ডে পার হ্যাপস সাম আদার ডে ইন সাম ফিউচার ডেজ হি উইল ট্রাভেল দি ফার্স্ট ওয়ান yet knowing how way leads on to the on to way the poet who is fully aware that the ways are interconnected interweaved one way leads to another but he doubted if i should ever come there the poet is not sure uh, whether he will be able to go to the fast road go to travel to the fast road ever in his life and both that morning equally lay in leaves no stay fat trod and black oh i kept the fast for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way here look at the look at the picture there are so many ways interconnected one way leads to another way i doubted if i should ever come back the poet is confused the poet regrets his decision the poet is sad for his unfulfilled choice so what does the third stanza mean the third stanza continues with the cognition about the possible differences between the between two roads he had noticed that in leaves the leaves were both fresh fallen on fallen them both both means both the roads and had not been walked on and then again claims that maybe he would come back and also walk fast fast means fast road sometimes but he but he doubted he would be able to because in life one thing one thing leads to another and time is short time is very short and time is just flying and fleeting it is carpedium theme so you will uh, read about this uh, in higher classes time is very short and utilize your time as much as you can so this is the third stanza now comes to the fourth stanza that is the final stanza of the poem the fourth stanza i shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages since two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference very carefully we should go through this stanza because often questions are set from this stranger it is very important in, and it is the in fact heart of the poem i shall be telling this i means here the poet of course shall be telling this shall be telling future continuous tense and the scenario this stanza is set in future what will happen in future i shall be telling this the poet will tell about this incident this happening that happened on wood on a particular autumnal evening with a sigh sigh means deep breath ekta dirghoshwas felo ami hoyto eta bolbo so here sigh means sigh can mean a tone of relief and at the same time সাইপালটেনাসলি এই টোন অফ গ্রিফ একটা ভালো পজিটিভ সেন্সেও এই সাইটা হতে পারে দীর্ঘশ্বাসটা একটা নেগেটিভ সেন্সেও একটা আনফুলফিলমেন্ট থেকেও এই সাইটা হতে পারে আমরা পরে কিন্তু এটা নিয়ে একটু ব্যাখ্যা করব বিশ্বতে ব্যাখ্যা করতেই হবে নাহলে কিন্তু এই স্ট্যান্ডাটা পুরোপুরি আন্ডারস্টুড হবে না সাম হোয়ার এইজ এস অ্যান্ড এইজ এস সেন্স সাম হোয়ার এইজ এস অ্যান্ড এইজ এস দীর্ঘ বছর পর বছরের পর বছর ধরে হেন্স মিনস ইন ফিউচার আই শ্যাল বি ট্রেডিং দিস what what should i tell and what will i tell that two roads diverged in a wood two roads diverged in a wood je dutu rasta bhag hoye geshlo dutu path dutu duti dike geche chole and i i here i the personal pronoun is repeated twice because he wanted to give the emphasis of the fact that he is the sole reason for taking his decision no one took the decision he took the decision alone and perhaps he is feeling sad for this also 
I took the one less travelled by. This is oft quoted sentence, this is often quoted by many uh, from this poem and that has made all the difference. So, why did he choose the second road? Only because it was less travelled, he was, he was thinking differently, he did not follow the crowd, he wanted to take unconventional path. So, he took the second one only because it was less travelled and that has made all the difference and this is the only reason that has made all the difference in his opinion. I shall be telling this with a sigh, so the poet is uh, telling this saga, this story to his fellow or you know uh, the family members in future perhaps. Somewhere ages and ages since in future, only Shomoe Porepodani Golpota Kurbo. Two roads diverged in the road, woods, and I, I took the road less travelled by. The crowd is following that road, but the poet alone is travelling there because of his independent spirit, because of his non conventional attitude. I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. So, this is the fourth stanza. Now, let us look at the uh, some um, larger, larger perspective through a diagram drawn by me. Look at this diagram very carefully and you will understand this difficult, most difficult stanza of this poem. So, this is this poem is about taking right decisions and the poet uses a word psi. This psi means two different things. One is unfulfillment, na power. So, this is a negative feeling and this may also mean happiness, means satisfaction. So, uh, let us deal with the first thing that is unfulfillment. So, this psi may mean regret of the poet, regret. What, is, what for is this regret? for not choosing the first path. He was, I, I told you in the first stanza, in the second stanza, in the third stanza, he was continuously thinking about the first route, though he was travelling on the second path. So, he becomes remorseful about this. Sorry, I could not travel both, you looked at the first stanza. So, it is a nostalgic feeling, a feeling of melancholy throughout the poem and it is beautifully expressed through this he sighs over the attractive alternative rejected. Shudrang she jetak a lohoni o bigalpo jetak she tag kore chhe taake chhatte hoye chhe or thab jetak fast path ta she ta hoye chhe she ta niye she continuously bheve chole chhe ebong tar mo thakta betonar udbhav hoye chhe. Bhalo kore dhekho title ta khyal koro title er modhyo kintu regret ta jothesh to bhavi evidently expressed in the title this sense of regret, this sense of loss to, of the poet. The road not taken, look at the word not. So, not taken is more important than the road taken. So, he was continuously thinking over his decision whether it is right or not. He was continuously pondering over it. Another feeling maybe it is a feeling of happiness at a khushir ab mone abhava, at a satisfaction, at a shantushti. Can you know, I took the one less travelled by and this shows his individualism, that vektitta bodhe jache, his non-conformity, his non-conformist attitude is evident in this sigh, in this decision because he took the decision alone and it was not frequently done by others and its size and celebrations of the difference and originality of his choice, the unconventional choice, untraditional choice that he made. He is also celebrating by this word sai perhaps, a sense of independence and motivation. So, this last line of the poem and that has made all the difference is interconnected in with his journey and this word sai and decision all together. So, this is the uh, diagram of the fourth stanza. 
I hope that you understand it completely and you will find it very easy. So, what is the summary of the poem? The poem, the poem talks about the choices one has to make in life and their consequences. It is into a figurative meaning bolchilam, jeta should not literally meaning opori opori bhabla cholvena, amadir kinto dub dite hobe. It is called shataru as a diver, as a swimmer, dives deep into the sea and sees what was there underneath the sea. So, here you also have to take a deep look in this poem. So, it is not about road journey, it is journey in life and making choices and regrets or satisfactions in our life. One day while walking in a wooded area full of trees, the poet comes to a place where he has to decide which road he should take. He starts debating over these choices and he realizes he cannot walk on both. However, he decides to take the second path with the intention of traveling on the first some other time in future. So, this is the summary of the poem. Now, come to the central idea of the poem, the message it gives, the broader aspect of the poem. It is an inspirational poem and it is obviously a motivational poem. How? Because it, this poem is about decision making in life. The, poet is, the poem is about choices that we make in our life. And which road would you like to take? The poem tells us about. Look at this picture. They are blindly following the road and this will happen for most of them. So, become very careful, be very careful before choosing any path because you should not regret. So, let us try to understand this message uh, more clearly through a diagram. I draw this diagram for your easy understanding only. So, road means life, it is a journey. And in life we have to take decisions, right decisions and for this we should take time. There are so many choices, there are so many options, but we should take time before making any right decisions. And before making right decisions, we should think differently, think differently, think independently. So, be yourself and do not move on blindly, do not follow blindly. You have to proceed on, but with independent thinking, out of the box thinking, which uh, most of the people do not think, think that way also, not a conventional or traditional path. And in this poem is also interconnected beautifully through this career options. This poem also warns us about taking right career options. The careers might be unpopular, it may be challenging, but we can accept it. Do you remember the beautiful scene in 3 years where Farhan was continuously trying to make the make him his parents understand about his decision. He wanted to be a photographer and his parents continuously asked him to be an engineer. He was studying in that famous engineering institute, but he continuously said that uh, perhaps engineering job will uh, make him rich, make him richer. He will earn more money, but he will be happy in this photography job. So, he wanted to pursue this job and he at last finally, he make his parents realized about his dream. He, his parents later on agreed. So, you also enjoy and live your life and think differently. There are soch na hai. So, this is the message of the poem. But terms and conditions apply also. There is a caution. You can't retreat. You can't move back or go back or retreat or regret or remorse or be sad after choosing 
make a choice after choosing something after taking your decision there is no way to undo this this is not a this is not a computer that you will undo and go back to the previous screen no you will not do that and you can't undo the decision so think very carefully take time and make your decisions in life the poem is also about this beautiful and very important idea and there is a famous quotation of robert frost himself that in three words i can sum up everything i have learned about life it goes on it goes on it continues life continues to flow and take your decisions wisely now come to the tone and mood of the poem this is uh, surely a reflective mood reflective tone and a nostalgic tone also because the poet continuously feeling uh, nostalgia feeling nostalgic about his past decisions and indecisions throughout the poem now come to the structure of the poem the structure is also important apart from the theme of the poem and we we in this section we will analyze the rhyme scheme and the literary devices of the stanza wise poem the literary devices or the poetic devices are like the ammunition eta hocche kobider kache ostro shastrer moto jeta diye tini tara kobita ke ba je kono literature ke sahitya ke tara aro beshi sundor kore tole dekhi stanza 1 e ki ache extended metaphor what is a metaphor metaphor is a hidden similarity a hidden comparison which is latent in the poem so here roads two roads are compared with two decisions two ways in our life two decisions so it is a metaphor example of metaphor and it is extended metaphor why is it an extended metaphor because this thought this comparison is throughout the poem it is extended thought so it is an extended metaphor anaphora so look at the word here the second stanza first word third stanza first word and this word here and the conjunction the word is repeated continuously throughout the consecutive stanzas so it is an example of anaphora visual imagery visual imagery is a very beautiful poetic device and by imagery visually you can uh, look at the whole scene so actually the poet was not traveling alone in the wood we were also traveling with the poet the readers any serious reader can visualize the whole natural scenery that the poet is depicting so we can just see the yellow wood diverged roads and uh, you know and this undergrowth you if you think deeply you can close your eyes and you can surely visualize the whole scene so it is a beautiful example of visual imagery and it is the whole stanza the, the all all of the stanzas are carrying this visual imagery so now rhyme scheme this is an important part rhyme scheme look at the uh, lines the last sound would stood and could this sound similar do sound is repeated in this first third and fourth line and both tho sound and undergrowth tho sound is repeated in the second line and the fifth line so if we say this is a this is a this is a and this is b this is b so the rhyme scheme of this stanza is a b a a b now come to the second stanza there is a simile so what is a simile in metaphor the comparison is hidden but in simile this clearly visible by these words as or like just as fair the other road has been compared here like the previous road as fair as fair as the first one so it is a simile a comparison clear comparison personification personification what is a personification an inanimate object is personified ki udharan ta dekho ekhane ki bolche it was grassy it means here the road it was grassy and wanted where wanted look at the word wanted does any road want something 
no the road doesn't want so the poet is attributing human quality to the road so here the road is personified alliteration is also there what is alliteration can you find the repetition of the same sound here look at do that there the the th sound th sound is repeated here is repeated the th sound so it is an example of what alliteration and here also you, you, you can find wanted to the w sound is also repeated and the rhyme scheme the poem is the rhyme scheme look at the last yeah, last sound fair where there claim same so uh, did this sounds appear before in the first stanza look at the first stanza once more would do sound and th sound was there so these are all new sounds so we can say that this is c this is c this is c and this is d this is also d claim same so the rhyme stanza is c d c c d now come to the third stanza there is also an alliteration a for sound is repeated first for and the rhyme scheme of the stanza is lay day and way the first line corresponds to the third and fourth line the sound and black and back so it is e f e e f okay now come to the concluding final stanza there is a repetition what is repetition when the same thing is repeated <coughs> same idea is repeated here ages and ages we can found a repetition and two roads diverged in a wood the same line you notice the the, this is the initial line this is the beginning line of this poem this line is also being repeated here and what is the rhyme scheme sai i by so this is g g g this is a different sound which didn't appear in the previous stanzas so it is g g g and hence corresponds to difference so it is g h g g h sound so what is the rhyme scheme of the whole poem a b a a b c d c c d e f e e f g a g g h see this is the whole poem's rhyme scheme but if we take the stanza separately it is only a b a a b so now come to the prosodic matter this is scans and you will read it in higher classes just remember this term this poem is written in iambic tetrameter this is scansion you have to scan the line with the meaning and syllables you will read it in future so this is the poem in a nutshell and if you are interested and if you like the poet frost you can definitely and i will uh, advise you and i will recommend you to go through the other poems of the same author because by doing this alone you can understand this poem better by a comparative and conflicting comparison unless you contrast and compare you will not justice justify a poem completely so these are the famous uh, poems by the same author i will definitely recommend you to write to read this poem you can find the text uh, in google also and you also find the text in my description follow my description you will find the text stopping by woods on a snow evening it is also about a uh, wood journey and the poet's dilemma between duty and beauty so this is it thank you for watching this video till the end hope you will be benefited through my video and study hard take care bye bye